one of these two exhausts flows more air while making less back pressure, therefore making more horsepower. But how do we know one flows better? This is a flow bench. The automotive industry uses this to measure airflow in units of cubic feet per minute in things like air intakes, cylinder heads, and manifolds. But there's something far more important than CFM that everyone seems to be missing. I'm Eric, and today I'm gonna to show you what a flow bench does, what it's not doing, and how we made our flow bench do the one thing it should have done in the first place. So let's get into it and hot rod a flow bench. This is Banks Entry Level, presented by Amsoil, the leader in synthetics. When you see an intake or exhaust that advertises improved airflow or better performance, what does that actually mean? Are they talking about air velocity, air volume, air mass, air density? Well, since this is entry level, let's start off by getting a better understanding of the properties of air and airflow. Air pressure is the amount of force exerted over an area, typically expressed as pounds per square inch or PSI. And there's pressure acting on you right now. Ambient air pressure is about 14.7 PSI at sea level, although we can't feel it because it's acting on us from every direction, from above, from below, and even from inside our body pressing outwards. It's all equal pressure. You don't feel a difference because there is no difference. When there is a difference or a pressure differential, air wants to flow from high pressure to low pressure in order to equalize. An air gun on an air compressor blasts out air by simply opening a pathway between the high pressure tank and the low pressure ambient air. The flow bench measures this pressure differential and since it goes from high to low, we call it a pressure drop because the pressure is dropping. By measuring the pressure drop through a component, we're a step closer to knowing how that air will actually interact when installed on a vehicle. CFM is the cubic feet of air per minute passed through a boundary. It's the volume of air moved over time. Engines are often evaluated in cubic feet per minute because an engine's displacement is a fixed volume, specifically the volume of each cylinder combined. And the RPM is what determines the rate at which that displacement is pumped. So engines may pump volume over time, but CFM alone isn't a complete view of airflow. For example, modern engines need to set air fuel ratios based on math, not CFM. And why is that? Well, it's because air has weight. Mass airflow is the weight of the air passing through your intake system, engine, and exhaust over time. CFM is the volume over time, and math is the weight over time. Measuring by CFM, it's like having a five gallon gas can without knowing how much gas is in it. Because air is compressible, the volume a pound of air takes up can change. Mass airflow is constant throughout a system. As air gets compressed in the turbo, supercharger, or the combustion chamber itself, the volume it occupies gets smaller, but the weight never changes. Let's say you have one pound of air at 10 PSI. Compress that single pound of air to 100 PSI, and it shrinks down to one-tenth the size, assuming temperature and humidity are constant. It's still one pound of air. It just takes up less space when compressed. In an engine, though, we have a fixed volume, specifically the volume of each cylinder combined. So to understand the weight of air in a fixed volume, we need to take a look at air density. Air density is the foundation of mass airflow. To get the mass in mass airflow, you need to know the air density, and therefore its weight. Now, apply that mass over time, and you get the flow rate. Let's imagine these two coffee cans as two cylinders of an engine. This one is full of popped popcorn, while the other one is full of unpopped kernels. While they technically have the same content, popcorn, thanks to these kernels being popped by heat, they're now less dense. Now, the same thing happens with the air in your engine. As air heats up, it expands or becomes less dense. But as air cools, it becomes more dense and contains more oxygen in the exact same volume. And with that, we can add more fuel and create more power thanks to our increased amount of popcorn or oxygen. Let's do a quick breakdown of what a flow bench is. Flow benches are used by race shops to measure airflow in cylinder heads, or by aftermarket manufacturers like us to measure airflow in components like exhausts or intakes. As we mentioned before, flow benches don't actually measure CFM, and they certainly don't measure mass airflow. So let's go see what they are measuring. Starting up top, we have a precision ground adapter plate. It allows us to use adapters like this 
to hook up to any component being tested. Now if we take this plate off, we can have a look inside the first chamber. The first thing you'll notice is the flow straightening mesh. Well, now what this mesh does is it promotes a very laminar flow across the cross section and therefore consistent readings. Let's take a look at the pumps. Now when I say pumps, I'm referring to 14 vacuum motors. I'm serious, they're vacuum motors. Above and beneath the pumps are cutouts, each with a rotating plate. By changing which one is open and closed, we can change direction of the airflow to intake or exhaust, depending on what component is being tested. In the original flow benches, measurement of pressure drop was done with a water column manometer. A manometer is a very simple device that shows minute changes in pressure based on the amount of water displaced by air pressure or a vacuum. So if I use this regulator to introduce a vacuum to this manometer, we can see it in action. But notice as I barely crack open this vacuum, how much it displaces. So I'm barely at a tenth of a PSI of vacuum, and notice how we're already moving quite a bit in the manometer, and this is the beauty of this scale, because one inch of water is equal to 0 0.036 PSI. And to show you guys just how sensitive this thing is, I'm gonna open it up to the lowest setting of positive pressure I can get on this regulator. So that was uh, just over half a PSI. So what you're seeing here is the reason that flow bench results are still reported in inches of water instead of PSI. That wasn't even one PSI. By taking a real-time pressure reading on either side of an intake or a manifold, we would know the amount of pressure drop at a given CFM. But the problem is, the pump inside the flow bench doesn't know how much CFM it's flowing. So how do we get that given CFM to base our calculations on? To find CFM, we'll need a third element, one of these. These are calibration plates from Superflow. They are certified and calibrated to flow a certain CFM at a certain pressure drop. These are a known orifice because Superflow calculated the exact airflow characteristics of these exact plates. So at any given pressure drop, the CFM these plates are flowing are known. Now we use these calibration plates to calibrate an internal variable orifice. What this does is it takes the known airflow characteristics and corresponds them to the internal orifice. It's essentially taking these plates, copy, paste. Now, if we put a component in line with that variable range plate, we can actually calculate what CFM is being flowed based on the relation between the pressure drop across the component being tested and the pressure drop across the variable range plate. This is called ratiometric measurement. Ratiometric measurement describes finding a desired measurement based on the ratio of two other quantities that exhibit interference. In simpler terms, we can find the airflow at a certain pressure drop through a component by comparing it to the pressure drop through a known orifice. It's the equivalent of measuring a string and then using that string to measure a plank of wood. Since this isn't a direct measurement of CFM on either the component being tested or the variable range plate, we call this bench CFM. Bench CFM is not the actual volume of air flowing through the bench. That's not me oversimplifying things. That is literally how Superflow describes their own bench. They go on to say, a flow bench does not actually measure flow, but simply compares the characteristics of a unit under test to a reference orifice inside the bench. And the biggest problem with bench CFM is that CFM isn't even the metric you should be looking at. We're ignoring the content of that volume. How much does that volume weigh? How dense is the air? Flow benches were first used for automotive applications by OEMs in the 1960s. At that time, most applications didn't see much variation in air density because there was very little restriction from intake to cylinder and turbos and superchargers were pretty rare. Now, however, about 50% of new vehicles on the market have some form of forced induction. Forced induction compresses the incoming air in order to get more air mass into the cylinder. Forced induction makes air denser. The change in air density from superchargers and turbochargers is dramatic, and it means using CFM is no longer relevant. And honestly, it was a flawed premise to begin with. The biggest failing point of flow benches is that air is compressible. The density of the air changes with temperature, pressure, and humidity, even though the CFM may stay the same. So how do we get data that's both usable and relevant? Well, one solution is to hot ride your flow bench by including a mass airflow sensor in line with your setup. In most diesel trucks, you'll find the mass sensor in the intake tube. The mass airflow sensor uses electrical current to measure airflow. There's a lot going on in this little sensor, but to simplify, it's got a small heated wire in the airflow path. 
based on how the air passing over it changes the wire's temperature, the electronics inside calculate the air's mass or weight. The denser the air, the cooler it will make the wire. This particular sensor, made by Bosch, is pretty trick. It also measures temperature, pressure, and humidity, the three ingredients of air density. As we discussed earlier, mass is constant throughout an entire system. So the reading you're getting up here in the intake is going to match what's going into your combustion chamber. The ECM is looking to calculate an air-fuel ratio based off the air reading from this sensor itself, which means that mass airflow is a much more relevant reading than CFM. So with MAF, instead of CFM, there are no calibration plates, no ratiometric measuring, and no conversions are needed. We can see the real-time and direct mass flow through any component, so this flow bench has essentially become a glorified air pump. But we're not done. We've also gone and added a temperature and pressure sensor both before and after the MAF sensor, so that way we can see how the MAF sensor itself is affecting flow. In any intake, the MAF sensor sits directly within the unit itself, and its presence is identical to how it would behave in a running vehicle. But if we test a part like an exhaust or an intercooler, we have to get a reading of something that doesn't typically have a MAF sensor. We have to account for its own presence. So with this sensor suite, we can actually get the differential of density across the sensor and factor that out in the final measurements. In order to get the most accurate data, our Frankenstein flow bench is also monitoring the ambient environment. Our AirMOS portable weather station is set up to get ambient temperature, pressure, and humidity. And with our four eye dashes, we can see all the densities and their components in real time. Now I happen to be using four eye dashes, but you can take a single eye dash and data log all of these sensors. To be honest, the CFM based flow bench has been obsolete for decades. But to bring it into this century, all you need is a mass airflow sensor and an eye dash. With our setup, we can directly see how air flows through our components, stock components, and competitor components to make sure that our test conditions are comparable every single time. We hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one because... It might upset some people.